2020 is a year that many of us have rightfully blocked from our collective memory. Not only was the year just generally speaking a rough one, the year in the world of IndyCar was a pretty sad sight too. But of all the bad and ugly stuff going on that season, one of the worst moments was the ungraceful motorsports crucifixion of Oliver Askew. After winning the Indy Lights Championship in 2019, Askew was shucked into the deep end of the pool by an assassin who swiftly started taking pot shots at him. After a solid yet inconsistent start to the season, a long-lasting injury would take him out of the seat. Substituting for him whilst Askew recovered was another recently screwed over driver, a driver in a far different part of his career. In this first episode for Gone Rides, I tell the story of the time Elio Kashinevich drove for McLaren. To start this story off, we need to go back to September 21st, 2019. With one race to spare, Oliver Askew sealed the deal and won the Indy Lights Championship as a rookie. With this came a ticket to race in IndyCar. Over a month later, on October 28th, it was announced that Oliver Askew would join Air McLaren SP full-time in 2020, partnering 2018 Indy Lights Champion Pato Award. Fast forwarding through the pandemic into the month of July, the COVID delayed season is underway. In the first six races of the year, Askew was doing pretty good. Despite having two DNS at the Indy Road course and Road America respectively, he's gotten three top 10s and even a podium in race one at Iowa. Entering the Indy 500, top of all rookies and one point ahead future two-time series champion Alex Pillow. But it was here where things start to go to hell. On the lap 91 restart, Askew spun trying to avoid the spinning Connor Daly. In doing so, Askew slammed into the inside wall. At the time, I remember letting out a shriek of fear over one of the hardest crashes I had ever seen. Askew took a wicked hit and suffered a concussion from it. However, the IndyCar doctors didn't pick up on this. Initially, thought to be winded, Askew got the medical okay to race after the crash. This is arguably what hurt his career the most. In the following four races in the doubleheaders at Gateway in mid-Ohio, Askew understandably struggled. Finishes of 14th, 17th, 19th, and 15th were a marked departure from the finishes he had gone before, and it was obvious that something was wrong. This made the following development not much of a shock. After mid-Ohio, Askew went to the IndyCar medical crew and reported balance and coordination issues. Tests administered by the IndyCar medical team shortly after this would reveal that Askew had been battling a concussion for about a month. Upon this discovery, he was marked as unclear to return to the series, and was out of the next doubleheader at the IMS road course, and marked uncertain for St. Pete. On Thursday, September 24th, 2020, all of this was revealed, and shortly afterward, Oliver's replacement for the Harvest Grand Prix doubleheader was revealed as well. Going back to August, Elio Castroneves has best Indy 500 ever since he retired from full-time racing at the end of 2017. He finished 11th, but despite that, his time at Penske was widely considered to be over. Earlier in 2020, Scott McLaughlin had tested an IndyCar on both a road course and an oval, and impressed Penske so much that by February, it was already announced that he would make his debut at the Grand Prix of Indianapolis, driving the number three car and taking that event from Elio. Even with the pandemic bringing a kibosh to that plan, the writing was on the wall that McLaughlin would take Elio's spot at Penske. After Elio's run at Indy, he was essentially a free agent for the first time in decades. Elio would find his way to McLaren, being announced as Askew's replacement for the Harvest Grand Prix. This would be a remarkable thing, as a 2020 Harvest Grand Prix doubleheader would mark the first IndyCar race since the 1999 Marlboro 500 at California Speedway where Elio won drive for Team Penske. The lone practice session began on Friday, October 1st, and considering it was Elio's first time in the car, you couldn't expect much. Elio would end the session in 23rd, only ahead of James Hinchcliffe and Sage Karam. However, come time for qualifying, Elio would put in a pretty surprising performance. On paper, a 19th place start wasn't the best in the world, but it was impressive considering it was only his second session in the car. The first race wasn't ideal as he came home one lap down in 20th. Race 2 also saw a loss of one position from the start to the finish, as Elio started 20th and finished 21st, yet again a lap down. Askew would return to the driver's seat for the Grand Prix of St. Petersburg on October 25th. However, it was a lame duck run. On October 12th, before Askew had even recovered from the concussion, Air McLaren SP had announced that Askew would not be returning to the team. Only a day later, it was announced that Felix Rosenquist would be Askew's replacement. The entire Askew situation still leaves a bad taste in many people's mouths myself included. But sadly, you can't change the past. You can just talk about what happened. And of the cacophony of things both good and bad that took place throughout all of this, came with it a forgotten ride. Thank you all for watching, and have a great afternoon.